What is up, all you GBA type fans? This is Tom. I'm here bringing you guys the final match, our Week 12 match against Crimson Seabed and the Detroit Steel Wings. This match, like I said, my team builder, which if you have any questions about the team that I brought, why I brought them, or about the sets, please check out that video I uploaded yesterday. But this match is for all the marbles. Whoever wins goes to playoffs and face Envy. Whoever loses, I'll well, just fall a little short, and uh, that's the end of your season right there. My goal here is obviously I want to win. Obviously I want to go to the playoffs, and I want to get a rematch against the three coaches, uh, two of which have devastatingly beaten me during this regular season. I know Crimson obviously wants to win, but let's see if we can try and stop that. My team is going to consist of a Scarf Thunderous, a bulky defensive Nido Queen with hazards, a Culberberry, Nasty Plot, Azelf, a Expert Belt, Wish, Offensive, uh, Bulky, Vaporeon, a Lychee Berry, Unburdened, Hitmonlee, and finally an AV Darmanitan. We look at his team, and I get about four of the six right. We see Crocodile and Volcarona, two things that my team very heavily struggles with. Two very good defensive options on his team, being Slowbro and Serena. And finally, if you watched my team building yesterday, I did say that while Sylveon, uh, Kyurem, uh, Dust Noir, and yeah, that's it. Didn't seem like very good brings. The other four, being Tornadus, Magneton, Cobalion, and Smeargle, could possibly be brought. We don't see Magneton, we don't see Tornadus, but we do see Cobalion, we do see Smeargle. Now in my mind, I'm looking at his team, and I think, well, Defensive Slowbro, Spadef Serena, probably Hazards, Crocodile, some sort of setup, Cobalion, and obviously Quiver Dance, Volcarona. I think to myself, he is probably going to lead off outright with this, uh, this Smeargle. And in my mind, I thought to myself, if I didn't see Tornadus in the matchup, I wasn't going to lead off from Dino Queen in the case that, you know, obviously the Mental Herb wouldn't be as useful in terms of the taunt. And even if Crocodile has taunt, I don't want to take an Earthquake. At least not outright. So I'm, instead, I'm going to lead off with Thunderous. And I'm going to see what he leads off with and probably you turn out. You know, we're going to hop right into the match. And overall, I am very, very glad that this final match comes down to someone against somebody who I have a lot of respect for. Obviously, Chase and I have had history in the GBA where we struggled, you know, in certain you know, rel relative respects and different sorts of seasons. But obviously, both of us have came and turned it around, and now obviously we're very, very confident in our teams and have had, you know, very good seasons for both of us. I'm going to go off for U-turn outright, and just like last time, where we saw that the U-turn, obviously not invested, did what, 25%? This time you see it does 50% to this Smeargle, and instead... Uh, he probably outright believes that I am physical just by that damage. He's going to go for Transform, something that I did not expect. And with that in mind, I think to myself, oh crap, uh, what do I do? I know he now knows my entire set on my Darmanitan. I'm looking at him thinking to myself, ooh, I, I could allow him, I could think he's going to overpredict, maybe goes for like a fire move if I try and go to Nido Queen, but I really don't want to do that, and I know this thing is adamant, I know this thing's gonna, even if I go to Nido Queen, it's gonna take a good chunk of damage, but I don't want Darmanitan to take a rock slide and get KO'd by my own Darmanitan. And if he U-turns out and he pivots out into something else, obviously I have switches to adjust accordingly. Because if he goes for a U-turn and he goes out into, like if I go to Nido Queen, he goes out into Slowbro or Serena, I can go into Vaporeon, I can go into Thunderous, I can go into uh, Nido Queen, I can go into, you know, you get my point. So what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to hard switch, get out of here, go into Needle Queen, and ensure that I can take whatever move he's going to go for, because obviously he doesn't have Flare Blitz, so he doesn't have the, the sheer power, but instead goes for Rock Slide, still does a good chunk of damage for being an adamant uh, resisted hit. And I am going here, I am going to uh, attempt to set up my T-Spikes. does bring in Slow Bro. This is obviously going to be a very easy draw for me to go into Vaporeon. Don't really have a downside to do so, but the T-Spikes are very nice, because now it's going to pressure Serena to come in and spin them away. I am going to switch here into Vaporeon, suspecting that he might go for Psy Shock, Ice Beam, or even Scald. He instead goes for Toxic, which does obviously put my Vaporeon on a timer, but that's not really the point of this Vaporeon to take hits and heal them and, you know, how passive it's been in other weeks. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm thinking to myself, and the same way that we saw Geo bring in Tapu Fini aggressively. And how it's relatively obvious against something that is likely a wall. I am instead going to go and think to myself, well, 
He obviously has slow rolling. Can't slack off, he's at full HP. Can't toxic again, I'm already toxic. If he scalds, it's stupid. If he side shocks, it's gonna do damage. But, you know, he's gonna... Not... It's not gonna be, in the long run, a benefit for him. Uh, so instead, I suspect that he's gonna go right into Serena. It's an easy switch in the situation that he is, a spadef set. So, I'm gonna click Ice Beam, hope that he switches. He does switch! Now, what does he do? He's gonna go right here, and he's gonna go into Serena. And I suspect, well, a spadef Serena is gonna take, eh, maybe... 46 to 52 percent then obviously i'd be able to 2k him with after the uh, the toxic spikes damage but instead no we see 70 percent from that ice beam that puts him in easy range to go for another ice beam or even a shadow ball and now it forces him to make a choice does he choose here to go for spin get rid of the hazards does he choose here to go for a synthesis to try and recover you know and obviously rack up a little more toxic damage on my end or does he here go for something like drop kick and attempt to knock me out based at the range that I'm on and his attack investment. No, instead he goes for Light Scream and I am going to outright knock him out here with the Shadow Ball. I do have enough investment to knock out this even behind the Light Screen. In addition, if Slowbar tried to come in to the Ice Beam, I would still be able to 2 a KO it with a, uh, a Shadow Ball, assuming that he's max defense. He is here going to go into his, uh, his Volcarona. And obviously you know my, my dedicated Switch which, you know, I, I discussed in my team builder, is Darmanitan. We see he's Lumberry. A little bizarre. Uh, maybe he suspected T-Wave on something like Porygon 2, but instead I am just going to go right out into Darmanitan. I am AV. I could take this hit, and I'm not really worried, because obviously has are not up on my side of the field. He has Quiver Dance, and in my mind, I'm sitting here thinking, there's no downside for me to Rock Slide, because if he thinks that I'm not AV and he just goes right for AHP Ground, or an HP rock or whatever. I kill him outright, and then we get rid of one of the biggest problems to my team. Instead, goes into Crocodile. He is going to take, obviously, a little bit of Rock Slide damage. We do see his Intimidate, so he's not Moxie, so I don't really suspect Scarf right now because I don't think he would necessarily, you know, run Intimidate Scarf like last time. I think uh, more of a bulky set with Intimidate makes more sense for my physical attackers. Go for Rock Slide. We see that with the Toxic Damage. Puts him at about 20% in terms of just damage he's taken. I'm gonna go into Neo Queen, and if he had gone, he's gonna he's gonna get rocks up here, same way I've already gotten T-Spikes up, and it's gonna be very good for him to get, you know, chip damage on my already poisoned Vaporeon. Obviously Thunderous take 25%, Dimantail take 25%, which will help his Volcarona. Gonna no need to Queen here. If he went for two Earthquakes, we're gonna see this first one here. I am gonna be able to live this based on my defense investment. If he is if he had gone for two, Needle Queen obviously is gone and I don't get stealth rock up. But instead, he goes for Stealth Rock and then EQ. This is going to allow me to get my rocks up and ensure that now he can't get rid of them. And now Volcarona can't come in for free and just start Quiver Dancing up. And it's going to take 50% on Switch in, as well as everything else on a team is, is going to take, you know, the, the good chunk of damage. Slowbro is not going to enjoy the 12% it takes from rocks and the other 12% from the Toxic Spikes in a very good position with my hazards. I'm going to go to Azelf here. And not only am I screaming that I'm Cobra Berry, you know, instead I could have went to something else, could have went to Thunderous, but if he was full defense, you know, full defensive, I didn't want to go for Superpower when he still has a slow roll going, uh, around. U-Turn wasn't knocking him out at the range he was at even after the, uh, the T-Spikes damage. And I didn't want to go into Darmantan. Obviously, I could be uh, I could be slower if he's jolly. So I thought Azel was my best option here. And I think to myself, I don't see an item like Leftovers. I don't see... Obviously, he's not AV. Maybe he's Z-Move. So, you'll see in his battle, I take this timer down super low. Because I was I was going back and forth. Do I Nasty Plot? Do I Single Beam? Do I Nasty Plot? Do I Single Beam? I'm going to call his bluff on the Dark Move. Because I don't really see a reason why he would bring, you know, like Z Knock Off or something. So instead... If he tries to pursue, if he tries to knock off, I'm gonna go for for the nasty plot here. I am gonna allow him to pop my my Cobra Berry, and then looking at the rest of his team, if he brings in Cobalion after this, it shows that he's Scarf, which entirely eliminates my concern with it being a Rock Polar set. So I'm gonna allow him to you know get rid of the Cobra. I'm gonna get up to plus two. And this allows me now to click Signal Beam and knock out this. I can get big damage off, if not KO outright, a defensive slow row if he chooses to bring it in. And also, it puts me faster than Volcarona because it's obviously it's not a plus one after the Quiver Dance. I'm going to go for Signal Beam here. I'm thinking to myself, ooh, this looks good. 
after the T-Spikes damage and the Stealth Rock damage, I think I can knock this out if it is defensive. And if that was the case, or, you know, that is the case, then that's I'm in a great position. Putting Azelf in a very good position. Oh, no, just kidding. We see he's Spadef. And a little disheartening. Uh, I fucking hate Slowbro, man. And it actually has a lot to do with that light screen. Light screen hasn't, wasn't up. I think I could have knocked him out outright with that signal beam. Instead, he's going to end up sacking off his Crocodile. Not a very, you know, not a big concern on my end. Does allow me to bring in both Thunderous and Darmanitan being physical with uh, relative ease, I guess you could say. Gonna go for Signal Beam. Gonna knock him out. Again, in a great position. We have now knocked out Serena as well as Crocodile. Hazards are up. And the things that need to be toxic are toxic. He brings in Smeargle here. And I think to myself, well, if you guys remember from Season 2, or Season 2 or Season 3, when I went up against Nick, he brought Dark Ford Smeagol. <laughs> Smeagol. Yes, that. That's his new name now. He brought Dark Void, and that threw me off, right? And I'm thinking to myself, ooh, I don't really know what it's going to go for. Uh, the name of the game with Smeargle is you don't know what move it's going to go for. I'm not going to try and predict or otherwise suspect that he's going to go. He has a bunch of different moves. I don't want to make a, a, a switch into something in case he tries to go for an attack move. I really don't want Thunderous or Dimanitan to get knocked off or to take unnecessary damage. Vaporeon's already toxic. Um, you know, Needle Queen got knocked out, so I'm just going to attack what's in front of me and get the information at face value from this Smeargle. I am going to click right here. Flamethrower knocks it out. Side Shock knocks it out. I'm going to go for Flamethrower because actually I go for Signal Beam, but instead he goes for Spore and it shows that he's Scarf. So he's like Scarf Utility Smeargle. I don't know what his other two moves are, but we see that he goes for Spore, puts me to sleep. And here, I think, well, if he is Scarf and he just went for Spore, he can't go for it again. So I'm going to try and make a double. I don't think he's going into Volcarona with the rocks up. I think it's a little reckless. So I think instead he's going to go into Cobalion. I'm going to make an aggressive double into Hitmonlee, trying uh, to bluff, I guess, a, a Scarf Hitmonlee, because obviously he's not set up yet. A Scarf Hitmonlee or otherwise some sort of variant that could take on this Cobalion, which is pretty much just a Scarf. But... As a result, he's going to switch out. I kind of suspected this, and I could have went into Thunderous. But based on the fact that, you know, rocks are up, uh, I kind of think here he could go into Slowbro. And I'm going to I'm gonna obviously play on that. So, he's going to switch out. I'm not going to click, click Close Combat, nor am I going to click Endure at this moment. I am going to pull a double. And I'm going to, instead of going to Thunderous and, you know, if he did stay in, he goes for a move. I don't want Thunderous to take damage, especially because now I realize that Thunderous I need in order to knock out uh, the Smeargle, because obviously it's Scarfed, as well as the the Volcarona. So I am going to go instead into Azel. Try and burn some sleep turns and see what he's going to go into. Uh, he does go into Slowbro, and I, uh, like I said, I am going to go into Azel. Azelf here, try and burn some sleep turns, we see this thing is Spadef, if you tried to slack off in front of me to eliminate all the damage he's been taking so far, that would be ideal, but I was thinking to myself, ah, crap, I should have made the double into Vaporeon instead, because he, he might actually be in range of the Shadow Ball, and it would continue to apply pressure to most of his team, and I would still have Sleep Fodder, so that the Smeargle can't click, uh, what's it, Spore. Kind of a dumb move on my play, um... I should have went, went to Vaporeon. Even right there, when he clicked Ice Beam, should have went to Vaporeon. Could have taken that hit, could have forced him to take you know more poison damage, and I would have been able to knock him out outright right there. Or at least force him to ha bring something else in and take that damage. Serena's down, Crocodile's down. I don't think Cobalion would have appreciated a Shadow Ball. Um, I don't think Volcarona would have appreciated a Shadow Ball, especially at the, you know, how much investment I did have. Uh, and even at like 50%, I could have sac I could have switched from Vaporeon into Azelf and sacked off later. The point is, getting rid of Azelf right there was a little... It was, it was dumb, and I recognize that in hindsight. Right here, he does not have a Ground-type, doesn't have a Grass-type anymore. I'm going to click T-Punch, and I'm going to knock this out. If he tries to bring in Cobalion, thinking I'm going to go for, like, T-Bolt or something, um, and try and take that hit, he can't necessarily do that. I'm going to try and knock this out right here with uh, Thunder Punch. I do, I, I've do. obviously confirmed already that he is Spadef, so I don't necessarily think he has the, the right amount of investment. Instead, we see the Wakan Berry. Do I still knock it out from here? Yes, I do. Didn't necessarily have time to calc that. I was kind of going 
these turns take a really long time on my end because I was super nervous. Uh, this is really coming down to the wire like I expected. A lot of good switches, a lot of good predictions, and pretty much Crimson and I had to bring our A game. That's exactly what we're doing. I'm going to stay in, and if he tries the Rock Polish right here, so, so freaking be it. I'm going to go for T-Punch, try and get a Para, a crit. Just do damage. That's the point. With two T-Punches here, uh, I I get off a good chunk of damage on this Cobalion. And if obviously I crit or I para it, then so be it. If he misses the Stone Edge, so be it. That's kind of the, the risk you take. But it also forces me now to... Well, sorry. Forces him instead to go into and just attack what's in front of him. Because I think he's he's pretty much invested right now with attacking. I'm going to go into Hitmonlee. And I'm right here is where I'm going to show off the Endor. Slowbro's down, he has Cobalion, he has Smeargle, and he has uh, Volcarona left. I know I know for a fact that this Hitmonlee can take this hit. If he goes outright, goes for close combat, or an Iron Head, or a Stone Edge. I could, you know, go for the Endor, get my boost up, and then sweep through the rest of his team. I outspeed Scarf Smeargle, I outspeed this, I outspeed the, uh, the Volcarona. The only problem that I have is that if he... He hasn't showed Rock Polish yet. If he shows it right here and goes for it, I just lose outright. That's kind of what was going through my head the entire time whenever Cobalion comes out. I've already seen Sword Dance. I've already seen Stone Edge. I assume he has close combat. And I don't know his last move, but I'm just I'm praying to God that it's not Rock Polish. I'm going to go for Endor. I didn't see really a downside to doing so. He is going to switch out, and he's going to go into Volcarona. He's going to take that 50% plus the, the poison from the T-Spikes. Didn't necessarily see a downside to going for the Endor. Um, if he attacked, then you know obviously I win. If he doesn't attack, and he goes into Volcarona, he goes into Smeargle. Uh, if he went to Smeargle, I went into Vaporeon. I'm ready, you know, I'm ready. Status. I could then attack what's in front of me. Attack the Smeargle. Attack. Just hit, click Hydro, and something dies basically. If if uh, he went to Volcarona here, obviously I go into Darmanitan. I take the 25%, and I assume he would have like fire move, but instead he does pack the necessary correct coverage, and he does go for Psychic. And I think to myself, ooh, if he has... Obviously he can't set up right now because he can't, you know, switch out. He has to go and attack me. He goes for HP, ground, rock, something, and with the AV, I live. However, I'm thinking to myself, well, Flame Charge will knock it out, and I will get the speed boost, but no! Because I did not take into account sheer force, I have just granted. <sighs> In my mind at this time, I thought to myself, shit, I can just go for a flame charge and get the speed boost. I didn't think that the secondary effect of the speed boost applied the same way the burns did for the flare blitz or the fire punch or the rock slide flinches. You get my point. I thought it just it didn't count like that. But instead, we find out, well, the hard way, it does. This allows him to bring in Cobalion and just attack what's in front of me. If... Eh, there is a silver line to this, though. If he chooses to Rock Polish right now, I'm just going to attack. He has to attack what's in front of him. This is problematic because it will still force me to kind of play a 50-50 game, which is what I put myself into when I got rid of Azel, so let it go to sleep, as well as, you know, not taking into account the stupid... Ah! Ah! Idiot! Not getting the speed boost because I am sheer four-star Manitan. Ah, dumb. So dumb. He's going to go for close combat. He's going to knock me out. I thought maybe I didn't see the, the message or something. and But even so, it allows me to go right now into, into Hitmonlee. And like I said, it's two versus two. He has Cobalion and he has a Scarf Smeargle. I have a Hitmonlee and I have a currently Toxic Vaporeon. We're playing the 50-50 game, boys, and I'm going to explain what was going through my mind as I'm trying to not choke right here. Because if I make the wrong play, and he if he Rock Polishes outright and he has Choppleberry, then I lose. I lose outright, but I think I might put him in range those two Thunder Punches, which is kind of why I let Thunderous die the way it did, in order to get me to the point where I can then still knock him out with a close combat if he has Choppleberry. I'm not going to let him, I am not, I'm not, I'm not going to let him set the Rock Polish right here. That's what was going through my head. If he goes right here for close combat, fuck it, I lose. Because uh, then, obviously, he'll just knock out Vaporeon right after. But instead, if I go for a uh, close combat right here, and he tries to predict my Endor, and he tries to go for Rock Polish, or he goes for Sword Stance, then I win. Because if I knock this out, he has a zero, or I assume a zero attacking Smeargle, a Transform Smeargle, sorry. 
and I can win. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just say F it. If he goes for close combat here and knocks me out, GG. Crimson, you deserved, you deserved to go to the playoffs. But instead, you know, I'm going to try and make the play, see if I can get it right, and I'm going to have close combat. If he goes, for, if I see Sword Stance, if I see Rock Polish, I knock it out, I win. Instead, he makes a switch. He goes into Smeargle. This is good. This is great, even. I am going to click close combat here. I'm going to knock him out. Uh, this is still going to force a 50-50. Smeargle is obviously is gone. I'm not going to worry about it. Even if I click Endor right there, I, can, I could have still went into Vaporeon. He can't necessarily do anything to me because, you know, with the amount of bulk that I had, I could still... Such little HP that that was currently at, I could still just kind of wish and get my HP back. Or he would have to go back into Cobalion. But here is a second 50-50. It's 2 versus 1. I'm sitting here, and I'm sweating my face off. I'm thinking to myself, I kind of have to play the Sucker Punch game. I have to go for Endor, have to go for Endor, have to go for Endor, until I predict him to not click either Rock Polish or Swords Dance. We've seen Swords Dance, we have seen uh, Stone Edge, I don't know what his last two moves are, and I, I think to myself, I have to go for Endor. I just, I have to. It's the only move I have. He has to attack me at some point, and as long as I pop the Lychee Berry and I get the the Inverted Boost, I fucking win. But he had, but I have to make either the right prediction, assuming he goes for Swords Dances and Rock Polishes. Well, assuming he goes for a move here, if he has Rock Polish, like I've been saying the entire match, which at this point, <clears throat> when it's one versus two, I really did think he doesn't have it. I, he can have it. He would have gone for it already. There were so many opportunities that he could have gone for it. But he hasn't. So maybe if he is just Swords Dance, at one point he has to attack me. Or he has to continue Swords Dancing, predicting me to just keep clicking Endor. If that's the case, then... You know what? So be it. I'm going to play that game until I make the right prediction, or I lose. And if that's how this game is going to end, that's how this game is going to end. I'm going to click Endor. I'm going to hope to God that he, he attacks, instead of me going for close combat again. He does attack, and oh my god! I felt like I was going to throw up right here. We fucking win. We won. Holy shit. Close combat can't miss. I'm not running a HJK, obviously. I outspeed him. I got the attack boost. Doesn't matter. Close combat's gonna knock him out. And holy shit, San Jose Shapitos, we're going to the playoffs. For the first time since season two. Obviously, I've gone to the playoffs and other leagues. But we knock him out. And in a very close game. In a stressful game. In a game where after I clicked that indoor, I felt like I was gonna throw up. We win. And maybe we're going to the playoffs. Whoo, man. That game wasn't the best game that I've ever had. I can't tell you which one was. Because holy crap. The amount of predictions that he and I both had to make. The amount the amount of times where he and I both had to sit there and go, well, we have to make a prediction, or he's going to do this, or you know, if he makes a different play than what I expect. and I end up coming out victorious in that one. And I gotta say, Crimson, that was the best game I've ever played in, in a league, ever. And hats off to you. Your prep, spectacular. Uh, the way that you planned for everything and ended up bringing the right sets and just kind of causing me to sweat till the very last time I clicked the button with that Cobalion. I suspected he was Chopple, at, uh, you know, for the most, the longest time. I suspected that he was uh, Rock Polish. I suspected so many things and... San Jose is going to the playoffs, and I couldn't be happier with the result of this match, with both my matches versus Crimson, and just the quality of this of this this season. I really hope you guys enjoyed, because I know part of me was enjoying that, but part of me was not. I thought the Vaporeon set was spot on. I thought how I got Hazards up with Needle Queen was was solid, and how I got rid of Serena really early on really did pressure him. This match was a great match. I can't say that enough. I can't even gush at how good this match was. Holy crap. If this isn't momentum getting into the playoffs, I don't know what is. I'm going to take this drive, this fire that has just been ignited underneath me, and I'm going to try and supply Envy with some hard dick. And I hope you guys are as excited as I am for that match. Leave your comments, you know. Talk to me in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And I hope you guys are just as excited as I am to go into the playoffs in the GBA for the first time since Season 2. 
well deserved three solid matches towards the end of the season to get to this point and damn this is going to be a great playoffs I don't care if I win or lose I think this has been a successful season I went from worst to playoff team and anything after this is icing do you think that I'm going to quit hell no man I'm going to try and beat Envy and hand him a nice L the same type of L that he gave me and then I have a rematch against either Geo or John and you know they both beat me and I'm going to try and give them an L too get to the finals and see who I'm going to play there that's the goal Every week is a win. Let's win next week, baby. Sorry I'm rambling, but I'm so excited. I'll talk to you guys next week. I'll talk to you guys whenever. Um, and until then, crunch time, motherfuckers. We did it. We got to the playoffs. And it's all just because just keep, keep playing. Keep trying. Never quit. That's it. See you guys next week.